The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... That small town friend who just wants to make sure that your wife's okay. That is Eric Velasquez. My <laughs> pronouns are also he, him. <laughs> if that tells you how I'm going to feel about this movie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's get the party started and just go ahead and say uh, definitely animal abuse. Like on camera. So uh, much animal abuse. Yeah. 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 I mean, there like, are cases where it's animatronic animal abuse. But man, there are times when I'm like, are you sure that's, that maybe that might not be an animatronic. That might be an actual animal they got pinned. Um, there was there was a, a particular no animals were harmed kind of message in the, at the end of the credits of this, which made me feel better about everything in this movie. Um, I'm side-eyeing that because I saw how he manhandled that calf. <laughs> that's not a euphemism. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I did, you know, like, actually, you know, usually when we talk about content warnings at the beginning, I just kind of, like, off the top of my head, but, like, at the top of this one, I wrote, content warning, animal trauma, make sure to mention this, because <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty intense stuff. Yeah, maybe a little bit of domestic abuse as well, kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even the beginning, you know, the opening credits are like a scientist dropping a lab mouse back in a cage with a bunch of other mice, and then they're just kind of like crawling around for the duration of the credits. Uh, Presumably being wheeled around on a cart. Yeah, and then we see them put into a box uh, that's being shipped, and the return address is Eden Labs. It's going off to Jeffrey, what was it? Um, Gaines. Yeah, yeah, the Gaines family. Yes. Jeffrey Gaines. And then we just cut to um, a couple driving in a car. The woman's in the passenger seat, and she wakes up from a dream because the, the husband has slammed on the brakes of the car uh, because yeah, it was a, just a deer, a deer ran out. They hit a deer. Yeah. Yeah. Or ran out. As she's waking up, there's like a flash of a magazine article that says, Infertility, a symptom mm-hmm. of our modern time. So I think that was what she was dreaming about. Right. It's, it's presumable... Uh, Basically, that's kind of her thing during the first course of the movie is that she's trying to get pregnant and they just haven't ha- mm-hmm. it just hasn't happened for him. It's like she's scared that she might be infertile, but they haven't really like done anything about it yet. So it's just like a, you know, it's just an anxiety in the back of her mind. Man, I really hope that this uh, plot point actually resolves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they hammered home a couple times, but like, yeah, okay. it, does, it doesn't really wrap up in any kind of satisfying way. No. Um, so, oh, we, we didn't say we're watching No Telling. Uh, you know, you, yeah. s- you see it in the, the title. So this is uh, one of the early Larry Fessenden movies. You know, he's kind mm-hmm. of like known as, as like one of the major auteurs in the world of like indie genre filmmaking at this point. This is one of his earlier films where he's kind of still kind of figuring things out and you know, so it's it's clunky at points, but like you know, it's kind of charmingly so. Basically, the director is the only one of note, right? Mm-hmm. Except for maybe the guy who plays Alex Vine, he's he's done a bunch of stuff on TV, but nothing beyond that. Yeah, I'm. I'd imagine this is like he just called up some friends and you know, uh, just got them all out to a country house and filmed this over you know a couple weekends right. or something. Almost certainly. But yeah, so speaking of Country House, that's where they, they're headed. The couple, they are, you know, this is Jeffrey Gaines and his wife Lillian, and they are moving to this small little cottage in the country that's got like a big barn behind it. And you yeah, know, the, so he can do some research. 
Yeah, and they, they seem really charmed by the, the place. You know, it's it's beautiful land, nice big barn. She's like, this would be a great place to try to start a family. Right, well, he suggests uh, starting a brood. And she's like, hold <laughs> on, dude, let's do one at a time. It's like, <laughs> yeah. ah, that makes sense. Man, once again, this plot point, I really hope it resolves. Anyway. <clears throat> And yeah, so then it just cuts to like the net, you know, they arrive like kind of late in the evening and then the next day they're unpacking. Um, they yeah, have a bunch of, he has of a like, bunch of cameras. Yeah. It's cause, so we find out that, you know, he's, he's a scientist of, of some sort and she is an artist. And so they both kind of have this fondness for like vintage cameras cause they use them in their work. They're looking at the cameras. I think they kind of like set up one of the automatic ones and take a picture together. Yeah. The um, old Polaroid, the, the automatically developing uh, film. Mm hmm. And as the camera's like panning around as we're, we're as they're taking the picture, we see a box that's labeled rat, rat guillotine. guillotines. <laughs> I love it. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, that cracked me. I mean, I guess I, I guess maybe that's a, a needed device occasionally for scientists. I, <laughs> sure. I, I guess it's the most. No, I don't even think it would be the most <laughs> humane way to dispose of mice. I feel like that's just a shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Unless it's, like, to get to a specific part of the, you know, just, like, shave off the skull cap to, like, look at the right. brain or something. I don't know. But, yeah, it, it was definitely a funny label on the box. Right. Not at all unsettling. <laughs> and we cut straight from that to a dead deer rotting by the roadside covered in, like, flies, flies and everything. Yeah. Presumably this is the deer that Jeffrey said just ran out in front of them and he didn't hit. And Right. That he hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm uh, calling shenanigans, because if he hit that fucker, his car would have been fucked. Yeah, as, yeah, she speaking. definitely would have been able to tell. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't going nowhere if they hit that deer. Spe- speaking as a person who has had, uh, I'm not going to say necessarily hit a deer, but has had impacts with deer. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they definitely will fuck up your car. Yeah. From the, the shot of the deer, we just go to, like, an estate auction where Jeffrey and Lillian are, like, you know, looking at stuff, and they're bidding. There's, like, a box of vintage veterinary tools and animal traps that Lillian right. is really interested in for some reason. Right. She's not morbid at all, either. You know? <laughs> right. Not, not the perfect spouse for a mad scientist. <laughs> but uh, also, we get this creepy dude just watching Lillian. Mm-hmm. They bid back and forth, and fi- finally she gives up and, and loses the auction. To the stalker. Um, yeah, and we see them outside just, like, soon after, and that guy bumps into her. He's got the box, and he's like, here, you owe me $20. And she's like, what? What? I don't understand. And he's like, but there was, apparently there was some other guy also bidding who was, like, thinking that she was uh, a poacher or something, trying to, like, basically collect vintage stuff and sell it at a higher markup somewhere else. And this guy was like, he was never going to let you win, but he, he no. let me win. Um, right. She's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pay you for it or whatever. And then I think we just see them back at home later, and she's, like, digging through all of her winnings. And inside there's, like, a, a little wooden puzzle box that she gives to Jeffrey that she thinks he might have fun with. Yeah, I wish I wish there was a plot point that kept coming up about that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a low-key Hellraiser movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, been, yeah. that actually would have made this movie better. Yeah, it, it did, like, it felt like a really, like, important moment, like, her giving him the puzzle box, and then, yeah, literally, it we'll sure never did. see it again. Like, even metaphorically, it means nothing. <laughs> right, true. Then we just see later Lillian's going on a walk through the fields near their house, and is surprised to find a dead cow. She sees it, it's got, like, a, a ribbon around its neck, with, like, mm-hmm. so what she's, like, that? trying, yeah, she's trying to get it off to see if there's, like, information about where this cow came from, or whatever, and like the ribbon breaks and it causes her to kind of like stand up really fast and she bumps into that guy again he's right behind her hey what uh, a creepy guy but yeah. this time he actually introduces himself as Alex Vine mhm he says like you know okay yeah this cow probably belongs to your neighbor the the Boyd family they've got a farm um, yeah, pesticides they've de- have gotten into their groundwater and it's killing some animals off yeah he has to try to keep his all of his livestock in one specific field that that's not overrun with this pesticide he's trying to go organic but it's taking a long time and it's a, a whole big thing which surprisingly uh, is a plot point mm-hmm. yeah that, that's like that's definitely one of the big sort of uh points of this 
And so then I think we just see later Jeffrey's at home and he's talking right. on the phone to a colleague that he's trying like, to get some money shifted around between the corporation. So he's mm-hmm. like, hey, let's move some money from R and D from this guy to us so we can buy some chimps. Yeah, and, and the chimps will become a big thing. Like he is desperate to get chimps. Like he, he really you know, he's working on mice now, but he feels like he's making progress, but he needs bigger animals that are closer to humans to effectively do the tests that he needs to do. Right. And of course, like um, another metaphor, he busts out a giant rat skeleton that for some (laughs) reason doesn't have legs, which I feel is kind of appropriate. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So his lab is like in the barn. So he goes back up to the house and we have like Jeffrey and Lillian sort of like talking about their days. She's really excited about that cow carcass that she got a photograph of. Yeah, she's super morbid because she's talking about it was really inspiring. I took a bunch of pictures of it. I'm going to try to do a painting of it. And she's telling him this while she's hanging up all of the weird animal traps to create like a little sculpture in the kitchen. And he's like, what do you call that? And she's like, a conversation piece. People will love to talk about it. And he's like, we live in a small town. People are going to think you're weird. No one's going to be interested in this. But he does take special note of the trap. (laughs) Mm-hmm. The animal trap. So it's like, ah, okay, this is good. This may actually become important. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. And their relationship, it's like, you kind of get a, like, they're a little flirty. They're like in love, but they're kind of like, it feels like they're trying a little too hard, hard. to be flirt. Like things aren't all going great with Lillian and Jeffrey. And so they're, they're trying to make the best of what they have at the moment. Right. Um, they yes. even talk about how her mom doesn't even know what he does, mm-hmm. officially. He's like, why don't we go out to the barn and I'll show you your art studio. And, you know, it's like, well, it's kind of dark, but yeah, I'm curious to see what it looks like. So they head out there and then we just see, like, out the window of the barn that they are just having sex in the barn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, the, the barn doesn't have, actually have lights, so they just start, you know, just dancing together and then bang time. <laughs> yep. That cuts directly to the next day where Lillian's at the doctor. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if it's an actual. Yeah, yeah, they're talking about about like sterility and like you know infertility and everything. I don't know if this is just a general practitioner or if it's like specifically a fertility doctor. I feel like he's at least OBGYN, if not fertility. Yeah, yeah, it it seemed like he kind of had a specialty or whatever, and she's definitely really anxious. And he's like, "Take it easy, don't stress yourself out. Like we're not to that place yet. Like you stopped taking birth control eight months ago. It takes a while to get out of your system. Yeah, give some time." Yeah. Back at the house, Lillian is just hanging out with Alex, and Jeffrey's not there. And like right away, like there's not anything like overtly going on here, but it feels like. This relationship is going to get to an in- inappropriate place before long. Like, Real you can just quick. Like, tell. Yeah. I don't like Alex. Like, uh, from the word go, I don't like Alex. Mm-hmm. And he never gets better. He only no. gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely, like, you know, he definitely has motives here that, that yeah. are not, uh, not great. He's um, like, he's coming in all altruistically, but it's like, no, you're a scumbag. <laughs> you're just mm-hmm. a scumbag. Yeah. Yeah, everything about him is, like, virtue signaling. Like, we'll get to where, what his work is soon and everything, and it's all about, like, appearing to be this positive force for change, but he's really just kind of a dick about everything. Yeah, ev- absolutely everything. And he even comes from money that apparently he squandered. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but anyway, in the meantime, the doctor is in his lab, uh, but he does hear Alex come up, or drive up, and that's when he drops a magazine that has, like, a, a, a chimpanzee's face with the talk about uh, the best... uh, We don't monkey around with our restrainers. (laughs) Right. It's like, ah, that's dark. Great. Yeah. Yep. And that's from Eden Labs as well. So Mm -hmm. at first I wasn't sure if he was just buying stuff from them, but I think he works for them and they're like giving him materials is what it seems like. Absolutely. So eventually Jeffrey like goes into the house and like or no uh, Alex and Lillian go outside and talk to right. Jeffrey as he's like getting ready to go into the lab uh, and they're like we're gonna go into town uh, do you want to come with us and he's like no you know I've got a delivery coming I've got work to do I'm gonna s- stick around here and I think he like get, this is, he tells them he wants Brussels sprouts if they see right. any which becomes like a really big plot point they talk about Brussels sprouts like five or six times in this movie <laughs> What does it mean? It's just Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but but it, it doesn't seem like at this point Jeffrey has any sort of like skepticism or jealousy about Alex. Which, Probably, you know what? That's healthy, I would mm-hmm. say. 
Yeah, I th- I feel like most in most cases in this kind of movie he would be a little bit more quick to like be judgy about that, but I think specifically in this case he's not because he's so focused on his work that he's less right. focused on his relationship, which right. makes him a perfect like, you know, Frankenstein analog. Like he's not paying attention to his his wife and is more focused on his experiments. Right. So Alex and Lily go for a, a ride and for some reason she really wants some ice cream. <laughs> which okay that's a cool i mean sure why not but then uh a pharmaceutical truck uh screams past them and almost clips them mm-hmm. and who who does that uh, pharmaceutical uh, truck belong to anthony yep that's eden labs again hmm. yeah so she's like that must be the delivery that jeffrey was waiting on so they, they keep going and then all of a sudden alex is like stop 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 right so like this maniac grabs the fucking wheel and swings it into a, a driveway Mm-hmm. to cut off this other car. Yeah, and so Alex gets out, and this is where we really kind of learn what kind of dick he is. So there's a man from a pesticide company, some sort of chemical company. He's had a long-running relationship with the Boyd family, selling them stuff, and he was checking up on them as, like, their sales rep. And Alex is like, you know, get the fuck out of here. Like, they're trying to go green, and they don't need you pressuring them and stressing them out. And, you know, Alex may be right that the pesticides are bad, but also, like... It's none of his business. Yeah, the Boyds can send him away. It's it's their farm, you know, and this guy's just doing his job. If the Boyds have told him to, to leave and he keeps coming back, that may be a problem. Um, mm-hmm. Either way, Alex doesn't need to be slamming on the brakes and, like, attacking this guy in somebody else's front yard. You know, that really sums up Alex completely, is that he had no business being there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's his, like, main character trait. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, and so, like, he... This this argument with the, the chemical company guy, like, goes on for a while, and eventually he does leave. Well, Lily um, runs off to shop, like, or goes off to the fruit stand. She's obviously traumatized by the, almost dying twice once due to this motherfucker who was riding with her. Yeah, she's definitely shaken up. Then we go back to the Gaines house where Jeffrey is going through all the boxes that he's gotten from Eden Labs. And some of the, it's, it's a bunch of animals to experiment on, but some of them are already dead. And he's like, I can't sign for this. Like, this is not going to help me with my work at all. Right, was that a dead rabbit or a dead lamb that he, like, picked up and just shook at the guy? Yeah, I, I think it was a big rabbit, but, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's some, some big white thing. And yeah, he's not happy about it. And then, like you said, Alex goes up to the boy. They have like a produce stand at their farm. He's like, you know, we need to start working on getting rid of all the, the pesticides that are on your, your land. We need to burn the fields, get everything out. The longer you wait, the worse it's going to be. Which, to be fair, he's not wrong. He's just an asshole about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's, that's one thing that's kind of interesting about this movie is... I feel like it does have messages about, like, environmentalism and, you know, animal welfare, but it doesn't, like, it's not preachy because everybody in it sucks. Like, Yeah, no, nobody. there is no hero here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we, we you feel bad for the animals, um, but that's, you know, they're they're kind of, they're, they're the blameless ones in it, but, but none of the yeah. people really, like, come out looking great. I mean, Boyd's fine. He's, yeah. He's just a farming dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, farmers use pesticides. Like, they, you know, it's, he's just taking what's available to him to make the best crop. He doesn't know. Right. He's just, you know, buying products and stuff. Uh, yeah, like... Surely this man wouldn't sell me poison to kill me. Yeah, my exactly. Family. That night, we've got Lillian and Jeffrey again. Uh, I think they're having dinner and discussing their days again. Right, and of course, Jeff's a little... He's kind of understanding what Alex is doing, and he's like, well, you know, everyone has a pitch, and this mm-hmm. alternative farming thing might be Alex's pitch. Yeah. And so maybe Lillian, we should be skeptical. Yeah, and Lillian's, like, more defending Alex, you know, which which is a bad sign right away. Yeah. If you're like, she's like, yeah, but, you know, this kind of farming has been around forever. Like, you know, chemicals, in the grand scheme of things, that's a newer way of doing things than natural farming. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey's like... Yeah, you know, maybe so, but, like, things have changed, and, like, he's definitely got a motive for this. Yeah. Like you said, it's a pitch. It's He's not just, like, altruistically trying to save the world. He's making money off this, and he's earning some kind of status for himself. Like, he, he's right. definitely got a reason behind what he's doing. Well, I do like how Jeff actually advises good scientific theory, and that he's like, you have to look at 
who this person is, who is behind that person, and like mm-hmm. what do they have to gain from this? Absolutely, so you have to be skeptical yeah. and you have to like understand where this information is coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then we see them in bed that night and they're having sex again. This like I thought this was like a pretty well done sex scene of like a couple who like they care about like it's it's not a graphic sex scene but it felt like a very real sex scene. Yeah. She's on top of him, and, like, they're kind of being playful. Like, he keeps trying to, like, move his hands, and she keeps, like, pinning him down. But, like, you know, it's it's not, like, S&M or anything. They're just being playful, and it's, it's, it is kind of sweet. It's it's a rare kind of sweet moment in this movie. Yeah, one of the few. <laughs> and then I think it's just, like, the next day, um, Lillian's Well, she has for... a dream where she goes to the, the science barn, as I call it, and mm. she sees a bunch of a rows of beds. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just like cots almost. Like, the mm-hmm. you know, like just like metal frame beds. Uh, and, then, yeah, there's just like tons and tons of them. And then she just like wakes up and there's like a bunch of like noise because people are doing work on the house. And she's annoyed right. by Jamming it. out to the Beastie Boys, by the way, which <laughs> yeah. I fucking loved. Yeah, I didn't think that was nice. So she's like getting up to try to see what's going on, and Jeffrey's like, "Yeah, I'm in, I'm getting an intercom installed so that we can communicate when I'm down in the lab." And she's pissed about it. She's like, I, right. "This better not have been your idea." And he's like, "Well, yeah, like I guess maybe in her mind she's like, this is a, an excuse for you to stay in your lab more, and that that might be what she's mad about." But but also it's like it's kind of a compromise for them him to work, but also be able to communicate with her, right? Yeah, I I mean, it feels to me like he's making a step to be like, hey, I know that I'm kind of unavailable right now, but I want to make sure that I am available to you in in some way at least. But yeah, I I mean, I think she definitely just sees it as like an indication that she's going to see less of him than ever now. Yeah. So she ends up going to her art studio to do some work since she's angry. And Jeff starts doing science on his animals. Mm hmm. Yeah, so we just get kind of like back and forth. He's like working on mice. She's painting this picture of a dead cow. Um, there's a part, I, I'm not sure, was it an ice cream sandwich that he was eating? Yeah, while well, he was picking up the literal pieces of the animals. Yeah, he's legs. eating an ice cream sandwich with one hand and like cleaning up bloody mouse parts off of a table and I was just like oh man that is just so gross Yep, <laughs> you're getting some kind of parasite I don't care who you are <laughs> and then we see Lillian later on that afternoon going on a bike ride and she is meeting Alex at a, a little pond nearby where Alex is taking the boys have like a young daughter um, Francine or Fran. Francine uh, and he's like taking her for a swim um, and just kind of like which he's that's weird, right? A little, he, I'm, maybe yeah, for the he, time not so much, but still kind of weird. Yeah, he's a little too close to this family considering that he's just like selling them farming, you know, implementation or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. it, it does seem a little strange. All I'm saying is every scene Alex is in, he's throwing red flags like they're candy or confetti. <laughs> yeah. So Francine is swimming and like Alex and Lillian are just kind of sitting on the shore talking and everything. Right, and Alex is kind of making plans with Lily. <laughs> He's like, hey, maybe we should go do some more stuff, you know, maybe have dinner together. Yeah, yeah. So he's definitely, as we keep saying, like he's he's got intentions here that mm-hmm. he's not being entirely uh, honest, I guess. Like Ulterior motives abound. Yep, absolutely, yeah. Um, and while this is all going on, we see Jeffrey go to that, you know, he leaves his lab, goes up to the house, and he takes the animal trap from Lillian's sculpture uh, and he tests it out with a wooden spoon in the kitchen to make sure it works, mm-hmm. and then carries it out into the field. Where he spikes it down and just waits for a unsuspecting animal to walk across its path. Mm-hmm. And we get this real creepy, like sort of like ominous omen. Uh, Lillian is cooking dinner, and... Um, the weird goopy eggs. Yeah, she cracks open an egg, and, and, like, as she's cracking it, the intercom buzzes, so she just kind of turns away and doesn't see that, like, it's, like, partially fertilized or something. Like, blood mm-hmm. runs out onto the, the countertop um, as she starts talking to Jeffrey, who says, like... Go ahead and make dinner without me. I'll be up there when I can. Yeah, like, I, I'm going to be late tonight. And so then we just cut to Lillian laying in bed. It's late. You know, she's trying to kind of stay up and wait to see if Jeffrey will actually come to bed. And then I'm guessing this is supposed to be like an animal eye view. We get this really quick little shot that's like tinted red. It's just like moving. It's almost like Evil Dead 
kind of camera work, Zoom you know, in. moving low to the ground. Uh, and it go, it's going through the field. It goes to the trap, and then we see like a, a raccoon. raccoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeffrey's caught his first victim. <laughs> the next day, or a couple days later, or whatever, Lillian and Jeffrey are taking a walk. She's like, "You're too wrapped up in your work. Like, I know we came out here so you could get away and have some like peace and quiet to do your your research, but like, right, but she's feeling lonely." Yeah, yeah. I'm out here by myself. This is this new place. I don't know anyone, and the, you're the only person I know, and you're taking yourself away from me all the time. Um, Fair enough. Fair enough, Vanard. Yeah, very reasonable. Um, and she's like, you know, I'm I'm concerned about fertility. Like, I, I feel like we need to be trying more um, so we can find out if if we need to take the next step. You know, like uh, we just haven't spent enough time together to really know if this is a fertility issue or just, you know, that we're not having sex enough to get pregnant. Fertilize. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, of course, like, so what, you're wanting me to choose between my work and you? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, just, this work's important. I'm going to, I'm saving lives. I just need the summer. Give me the summer. Mm. I'll be around some, but I, I need to be somewhat unavailable just for the summer. And then we can move forward after that. And like this, are you know they're they're kind of having like a, this is an important marital discussion. They're walking around the, the their field and everything. But of and course, then, he immediately gets a call, and what does he do? <laughs> mm-hmm. He just like runs away from her to go into his lab to answer the phone. So mm-hmm. clearly, not that concerned about her feelings. Okay. Uh, now here's the moment at which point I'm like, you know, I've been worried about Alex coming up to this point. This is officially the moment I'm like, fuck this guy. He needs to go away. Is whenever <laughs> Lily then goes to the house. And she finds a letter addressed to her in the doorway from Alex. Mm-hmm. So while she goes inside with that, we get a little bit of the conversation Jeffrey's having. It just kind of continues. He's like, I just, I really need some chimps. Just get me some chimps. That's what's going to get me to the next level of the experiment. Right. I just need three chimps. That's it. Find a way. <laughs> yeah. We get like a little later, Lillian is... Oh, we're not going to talk about the cut to the dog wandering through the field now? Oh, right. Yeah. This, so this is the, we've seen this dog before. The, this is the Boyd family dog. Yeah, named Chester. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because Francine, like Chester, just had puppies, and they're kind of trying to like give away all the puppies. But Francine really wants to keep like the runt of the litter uh, to stay with Chester. This is adorable. Yeah, but yeah, obviously, you know, we know what's going on in the field, so that's 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 a bad sign. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, back at the house, Lillian tries to talk to Jeffrey over the intercom, and she's kind of being a little flirty. She's trying, to, like, you know, we said nobody's good in this, but, like, I feel like Lillian is really trying to make things work. She's definitely letting her attention get diverted by Alex a little bit. Yes. Aside from Boyd, I would mm-hmm. say, aside from the Boyd family, because the Boyd family can do no wrong in my eyes right now, <laughs> yeah. um, Lily is definitely better. She's not good, but she's mm-hmm. better. Yeah, I mean, I think she's kind of like your archetype of, like, the lonely housewife who's, mm-hmm. like, looking for attention wherever she can find it because she's just not getting it from her husband. Right. But she's still Where- trying to get it from her husband at the same time. And, like, right. I think in an ideal world, if Jeffrey had paid attention to her, like, she would not have been even remotely paying attention no. to Alex. But, you know, it's one of those, it is what it is. Like, it is what um, it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she's talking to him. She's kind of like, you know, flirting with him a little bit over the intercom and is like, you know, I was thinking about going into town to buy stuff for dinner. Are you going to eat dinner with me? And he's like, yeah, if if you're cool, like eating around nine, I should be done by then. Right. Well, that's kind of ridiculous time to eat. (laughs) In my opinion, some people may (laughs) eat that time, but yeah, it's a little late. Yeah. And then like we, we get a moment like she, you know, she's like, okay, that's fine. And then she's just standing there, and she hits the button again like she's going to say something else. And then she's just like, it's not worth it, and she just doesn't. Um, So So then we cut to her and Alex talking in Mm -hmm. uh, his truck. Yeah. And they're they're having drinks, and um, they're discussing Lillian and Jeffrey's relationship and, like, you know, how long they've been together. I think she says something like, we've been married for three years, but we've been together, like, a month because he's away so much. Fair enough. And then um, Alex explains that he was almost married uh, to a girl. He, they went down to South America and saw, uh, I think, was it uh, Mexico specifically? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and they saw all the pesticides basically wreaking havoc across the farmland. And they cleaned up down there or something, but they just couldn't make it work. Yeah. It feels like he's kind of trying to like be sympathetic to her. Meanwhile, we see jeffrey wandering around goes to into lily's art studio and he sees a stack of polaroids 
and starts flipping through them. And we didn't... So when when she ran into Alex, when she found the dead cow, Alex, like, offered to develop the pictures for her because he has a lab or something, some access to photo developing equipment. Because of course he does, right? Yeah. Um, but she's like, yeah, there's still, like, two or three pictures on here. And he, like, takes the camera and takes a picture of her. Yeah. So now Jeffrey's going through the photos and there are pictures of Lily taken by someone and then mm-hmm. pictures of Alex. So many pictures taken. of Alex. Yeah. So I think this is the first time that, that Jeffrey's like, oh, oh, I have not been paying attention to what's going on in my house. Right. Like there, there's uh, there's things going on that I, I should be more aware of. Yeah. So this is when he gets his, his awareness is raised at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now well, the jealousy is going to kick in a little bit. Right. So now we're talking, uh, now we go back to, once again, uh, Lily and Alex. Uh, She's talking about how, you know, she understands that his work's important, but, you know, she's important too. That's fair, 100%. -hmm. And Alex is like, hey, maybe we can, you know, go talk about this someplace a little bit drier and a little bit more homelier, like, you know, my hotel room. Mm Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I think I'd like that. So they go to the hotel, and he's like, okay, so this is a small town. People talk, so... I'll go in the front, and you go around the back, and I'll let you in. Like, like how much of a fuck boy is this guy, though? Like, he knows. <laughs> he's, he knows yeah, he's, he's got plans. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah, she's like, no, I, let's, let's just be adults about this. Like, let's just go in the front door together. And oh, he's no. like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I promise that I'm doing you a favor. This is what you, yeah. this is the way you should do it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's clear that like he, yeah, he's, he's done this before. Yeah. Um, he leaves her out in the rain. And goes to mm-hmm. clean out his uh, his uh, really trashy fucking room. <laughs> like, this dude is such a bachelor. Mm-hmm. So he's, like, straightening things up. And Lillian gets out of the truck to, like, go around the back. And then she's... I think she kind of, ha- you know, she's hit with, like, oh, what, what yeah. was I just about to do? Um, right. So instead she gets on her bike and rides home in the rain. While Alex is cleaning up, there was a commercial on TV for another pharmaceutical company Fex. called Fex. So, yeah, and we'll get a little bit more from Fex, but, like, clearly, like, this movie's trying to point out to you that, like, our lives are run by pharmaceutical groups at this point. Not much has changed, right? Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. So then back at home, Lily's gotten, you know, gotten inside, and she's taking a shower because she's been out in the rain and everything. But she actually gets a call from the intercom this time. Yeah, this scene was really strange to me. Like, I really felt like it was, something was about to happen that, that... Yeah. So, she, yeah, she... You know, she's, like, drying off. She hears the intercom. She runs over, and it's Jeffrey, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to come up for dinner here in a few minutes. I love you. And she, like, she takes the towel she's drying her hair with, and she throws it, and it lands on the fan, and the camera really dwells on it. Like, I thought, is it going to get caught in the fan? Is the fan going to explode? Right. Is it going to catch on fire and burn the house down? No, nothing Nothing happens. I don't, I don't. It's pointless. Yeah. However, we also then cut to Jeffrey, and his his hand is covered in blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as he's so telling like, her he loves her, it's like, and that shot's really good because it's like we're on like his left side and it looks fine, and he's like, "I love you," and the camera like goes around his back, and then you see his other hand is like drenched in blood. So yeah, it's just like it looks like this kind of like duality thing, like a, a two face kind of metaphor there that he's like acting normal and clean to her, but he's got this dark bloody side that that she knows nothing about. Right. Which we love um, to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get... So the next scene, I thought was a flashback, but it's, mm-hmm. I don't think it is. Because it's like, we go right from seeing his hand covered in blood to seeing him find Chester, the, the, the Boyd's dog, in the animal trap. Right. Um, Presumably and, this is basically just the next day when he went looking for his, uh, his new trappy. Yeah. See, I thought it was like going to kick back that like this is why his hand's covered in blood, but yeah, but no, too. this is just a, another. He, the The previous night's blood was a different animal, but right. now now we're moving on to to the Boyd dog, and he like wraps it up in a trash bag and throws it in the back of his car so it doesn't get blood everywhere. Well, it would be really great if he could just get off, but oh my god, Alex is right there. How weird mm. is that? <laughs> yeah. And this scene's really good. It's super tense because, you know, Alex doesn't know anything's going on, but Jeffrey knows he's got a dead dog or dying dog, not a dead dog, even worse, a dog that could possibly make a noise, uh, you know, just a few feet away in his car. Alex is like, I thought I heard a dog barking over here. And Jeffrey's like, yeah, me too. Me too. 
I was seeing if I could find it, but I don't. It must have gotten away. I don't. I don't see anything. And they like shake hands, and Alex is like, "We really should get together and talk." Okay. Our our work overlap. Let's let's talk about this though, because the way he shakes hands with Jeffrey, and Jeffrey's like, "Yeah, we might we might eat. You know, we might get together for dinner later, right?" Mm-hmm. And Alex is like, "No, I'm not letting you go until we come up with a dinner plan." I would have been like, "Fuck you," first off, mm-hmm. and yeah. get away. <laughs> Yeah, but, that was but, way but, forward. Like it was, yeah. yeah, not and and you know Jeffrey's like I probably like, would okay, have grabbed his wrist and punched him. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not have been okay with with this. And it works. Like I, I'm not sure really what Alex's intentions are here, but Jeffrey's like, fine, sure. Uh, You're pretty clear. T- 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 He's tonight, trying to drive a wedge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, Jeffrey's like, yeah, seven o'clock tonight. That's fine. And Alex is like, do you need to check with your wife? And he's like, no, nah, she's she's been wanting to meet some people around town. She's, you know, we've been look, trying to do something like this, but I've been so busy with my work. She'll be. Well, thrilled. how about this. I bring my friend Philip, Alex says. He, he basically <laughs> is forcing his friend Philip into this situation as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, Jeffrey's like, yeah, that's fine. You all come by at seven. That That's fine. Yeah. Um, By the way, I want you to know this is officially 45 in- minutes into this movie, and I literally wrote, I hate everyone in this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. Mm-hmm. And so then we get Jeffrey back at home. Lillian is painting, and she doesn't see as Jeffrey unloads the dying dog into the lab. So she heard the car pull up, so she runs down. And Jeffrey, like, slams the, the lab door, like, doesn't want her to see what he's been doing. And he's like, oh, um, I invited Alex over. He practically insisted. I'll totally come up and help you cook in a little bit, but first I got work to do. And he just, like, slams the door in her face. Right. Throws the groceries at her, like, here you go. And Yeah, I bought a go. roast. You can cook. That's... <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, not not great. I think then we cut to like back at the house. No, we get him cl- doing a cleaning montage of his fucking lab. Mm, yeah. So he's working in the lab. He you know messes with the dog a little bit. Like I don't think he knows exactly what he's gonna do with her yet or him yet. I guess her. It had to be. Well, no, it's a uh, him because he's the father of the puppies. Oh okay okay. Jeffrey ends up, finally does come up inside and he's like, sorry, I know I, I said I'd be up right away. I, I was longer than I thought. And Lily's kind of like, she's put on makeup, you know, which is like, you know, we're in this small little, small town, country farmhouse. Putting on makeup is definitely like something she's doing because Alex is going to be there. Then at dinner, we get Jeffrey and Alex kind of discussing ostensibly the reason that Alex said he wanted to come over. They're talking about their work and how it overlaps. And basically that corporate interference is affecting the way science is done. Scientists don't have the freedom to just explore things now. They have to do it because a company wants them to for some reason or another. Right. And Jeff tries to argue that it's because, no, the way they do it allows for competition. I mean, don't get me wrong. I agree with Alex. He's just an asshole. (laughs) <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. I, I don't believe that that level of competition that Jeffrey believes in exists. No, definitely not. This is how you end up with, like, patent medicine that, like, yes. you can't buy pills that are $1,000 a pill and stuff like that. Like, And it's how, like, we, we had free COVID stuff for a little while because the government yeah. was involved, and then suddenly everybody starts pulling their patents. Yeah. When a certain uh, uh, Microsoft billionaire got involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, they talk about cancer, like, we need scientists to help cure cancer, and like, uh, eh, cancer is going to be preventable in no time, which, <laughs> no, we're, we're, yeah, we're still there. And then, while they're arguing about cancer, Philip pulls out a cigarette. A cigarette? Mind if I smoke in the house? And they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead and smoke in the house, it's fine. Yeah, it's not like we're talking about the thing that that's giving you. <laughs> right. right now. But here's yeah. another point, though, about this whole conversation. Like, Lily tries to chime in, but she gets literally shot down by both Alex and Jeffrey mm-hmm. in equal yeah. measure. Yeah, that's when things start to get really tense. Like, she says something about, like, you know, of course it's up to the, the, the white men here to discuss progress mm-hmm. in the future. I don't get any say in that. I, You know, women are just getting dragged along through your ideas of progress. Right. Uh, and, you know, she kind of, like... Yeah, I, I think, you know, Alex may have driven the wedge the wrong way here, like, by forcing this tense conversation. He literally sh- shaved off the top of the head for everybody. Mm-hmm. 
He's yeah. just shutting Lily down. Because they're, they're talking about like animal testing and like how it's too complicated for the public to understand, so we got to hide it. It's a pretty heated discussion, and then eventually, like I think it just kind of cuts away from that to like that night while Lily and Jeffrey are getting ready for bed. Like you know, Alex and Philip have gone home. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey starts kind of like needling her about like that she was defending Alex too much during the conversation. Yes. Um, and yeah, like it's clear that he, mostly it's clear that he's really just jealous of Alex. That it's not about the the conversation so much as that he doesn't want Lily to like Alex more than she likes him. Right. Which understandable response, probably a little over overcorrection, a little late <laughs> in the game, but yeah. And while this is all going on, Lily is like kind of straightening up the bedroom. She's and... swinging around his syringes. Yeah, there was like a syringe in one of his pockets and it falls out, it rolls under the bed and the camera keeps dwelling on it and I kept thinking like, she's going to get stuck with this and it's right. like, it's, it's going to cause around. yeah, it's caused some sort of weird reaction because I knew that this was a Frankenstein related movie but I'd never seen it and I was, I, I, you know, like you said, we're, we're more than 45 minutes in and I was like When's the Frankenstein happening? Like, right. yeah, I mean, we we know Jeffrey's, uh, you know, some sort of weird scientist, but like, you know, I was like, maybe Lillian's gonna become something, but no, she just finds the syringe and it's like, hey, don't leave these lying around. I, I don't like that. Right. Uh, and he's like, oh, you want to. He says something like, oh, so you're really interested in what I'm up to in the lab, huh? Then they, like, I think they just go to bed, and Lily is laying there and can't sleep. So she's like, I'm going to go for a walk, and Jeffrey's like, Well, no, she's like, I'm just going to go downstairs, is what Mm. she lies to him about. And as she gets out of bed, he rolls over, and he's like, you're not fucking going downstairs. Mm. (laughs) We know what's up. Yeah. So she, you know, takes his keys, sneaks into the lab, and, like, the lab has, like, several sections. She's just in, like, the first room, and she finds a stack of photos, which is kind of, like, echoes that Jeffrey found a stack of photos of her earlier. Right. Uh, but but, but Jeffrey's photos... Bit, these are a little <laughs> bit darker because they're of the dissected animals, including the raccoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of mangled animals, and it's like, yeah, at first it's a bunch of mice. Sure, she knows he's been doing that, but then, yeah, she sees the raccoon and is like, what the fuck? Like, right. that's, not a, that's not a normal lab animal. Then she goes into the next room and finds the bear trap. Mm-hmm. By the way, they uh, we didn't talk about this earlier, but there was like a brief moment where she was dwelling on the bear trap at the dinner, and Jeff's like, hey, give me some wine to distract her. So that wasn't mm-hmm. that important. Yeah. Because it wasn't um, there. Right, yeah, and so um, bef- uh, she sees the trap, and then she's going to go into, like, the next room, um, and Jeffrey appears and stops her, and they uh, they start arguing, and she's like, what What are these pictures? What's going, like, you know, you're trapping animals now? He's like, no, uh, I'm treating animals, you see, um, and he tries to basically be like, it's kind of my hobby, <laughs> uh, you know. Sometimes I have to go out and find other animals to compensate for the animals I'm not getting, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely he's like, you know, this is how things are done. Like it's part of science, it's important and I'm helping yeah. helping animals, I'm going to be helping people. Like this is you knew this is what I do. Um, yeah. and yeah, she's she's not happy about it and he basically like shoves her out of the lab. Like he just right. like drags her out. Um, and then I think he comes out with her though, right? Like he um, Yes, but he goes back to lock up. And that's when she runs into the house, grabs a blanket and a pillow, and just fucking tries to book it down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I th- and he stops her. I think she's going to, like, try to sleep in her uh, art studio. studio. Uh, but, yeah, he stops her, and they get into a, more of an argument and just kind of continue to fight. Um, and I right. think eventually... He basically blurts out. He blurts out that's like, yeah, I kind of, you know, I needed this for the summer. Once we're done with that, then we can actually have a normal life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think she still does go and sleep in the the studio. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think they part ways. Uh, well, the way he says it, she's like, "Oh, now finally the truth comes out," and she's mm-hmm. basically done with her, or, or she's done with him. Yeah. Then we see the next day, Jeffrey is working on the dog. Um, you know, doing doing some some sort of you know he's cutting into to this dog and everything. He's on the phone again, continuing to be like, "Just send me some chimps, please. I just need chimps." Right, that's um, the last step before we're ready to, to sell this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and meanwhile, Lillian is still in the studio. She's working on her dead cow painting. But we, but also, there's the house is full of flies at this point, like the cat, the deer was earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's a knock at her studio door, 
and it's Jeffrey, and he's got a little terrarium with one of his lab mice in it. Um, and like this felt just like just bullshit. Like yeah. here's my like like fake peace offering is you can have one of my lab mice. Right. But like she seems to kind of respond to it like and I, I, I don't buy that. I feel like she would be like, fuck off. You've killed like <laughs> hundreds of these. This one that you're giving me means nothing. Who's to say um, you're not just going to take this thing and kill it when I'm not. Yeah. Looking? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, she she takes it. And, you know, I think then we cut away and we finally see the people that Jeffrey's been on the phone with all this time. <laughs> um, and they're like. Yeah, we probably should get Jeffrey some chimps. Like, uh, we could probably move some stuff around. Like, it seems like that might, what he's working on might be really beneficial if we can get him the necessary tools. Right. And one guy's kind of like, well, you know, we've got more lucrative stuff here uh, if we give those monkeys to this other group. And of course, I guess it's the CEO. We don't hear his name. We don't know. He's just sitting Mm -hmm. there chopping away at a steak. And he's like, no, I think what Jeffrey's doing is he, that's our meal ticket right there. That's the one. Yeah. Outside the lab, um, Jeffrey is burning a bunch of documents. Evidence I, is what we call that. Yeah. So, okay, uh, that, okay there, there's something coming up that I was really confused about, but it may be tied to that. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's burning up some stuff, and then he goes inside. Lillian's like, my period's a couple weeks late. And he's like, oh, great. This is what we've been waiting for. Congratulations. Oh, like. Yeah, and, you know, she's like, well, you know, it's still too early to say anything for sure, but it is, it is late, so, yeah, it, it could be something. I don't know. Right. Um, and then we see, like, it's like that night. She has another nightmare. I didn't even write down what happens in this nightmare. It's real quick. So, okay, yeah, so she's dreaming about being chased through a ribboned forest and somebody in, like, a pink robe or dress. I'm guessing maybe that's her mental idea of a baby. <laughs> but she runs into the science barn and she gets gets put on a table and zipped up in uh, a bright red body bag. Uh, okay, yeah. While she's asleep, or I guess maybe the next morning, Jeffrey mm-hmm. um, goes to the Boyd house and is like, Hey, uh, I want to buy a cow from you. And Boyd seems very skeptical of this. He's like, yeah. What are you going to do, do with it? Yeah, and he's like, Well, it's, you know, it's for my work. It's for research. Um, I, I can give you $300 cash right now. And I think Boyd's probably in a position where... He needs it. Yeah, he needs it, and like he may not be comfortable with what Jeffrey's doing, but he needs the money more than he can be capable of having sort of morality about this. Right, but in kind of a last-ditch effort to stop Jeffrey, I guess, he's like, so how are you going to get it home? You're bringing a car. A cap's a pretty big animal, even for a car. How are you going to do that? Yeah, Jeffrey's like, yeah, it's fine. Like, Give me a rope. I'll, I'll just I'll lead it home on, on a leash. It'll be fine. Yeah, Ah, then uh, we get to the fun scene, right? <laughs> right. God. Yeah, so he's, like, dra- he drags it home slowly, and the calf's fighting the whole way. Um, like, and then actual he- calf actually fighting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, hopefully this is, like, a rodeo kind of thing, and, like, I, I assume that, he, you know, that this is done with... But, yeah, it does look unpleasant. I don't calf, trust like- it. <laughs> they can say what they say, but I don't trust it one bit. Yeah, and the cast kind of like bleating, you know, it's kind of like it's it's not it does not look like it's happy. Right. And ultimately the end is like he gets close to the house and sees that Lillian is is outside and he's trying to like not get caught, you know, dragging a calf into his lab after, you know, the mouse peace offering is not going to look so good if he's like right. murdering a cow. He ends up hitting it, the calf with a rock to like knock it out. I thought he yeah. like killed it, but Right. Yeah, but then like there's a blood little, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it looks bad, but then he ends up... She goes back inside, then he's able to, like, drag the calf into the lab. Um, right, but it is it is upright when he's dragging it in, so he just KO'd it, mm-hmm. which I'm still like... I mean, obviously, he didn't hit the cow, the calf with a rock in real life, but the, yeah. that dragging is still pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks... Uh, it, it does look uh, intense, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, but so then we see Lil, Lillian's in the house and she calls Alex's hotel and like, you know, like, you know, calls the front desk and asks for him. And then right as Alex answers the phone, Jeffrey comes in and she, covered in blood and sweat. Mm-hmm, and she like hangs the phone up really fast. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Jeffrey's like, I'm really close to a breakthrough. The work's almost done. Like it, all of this stress, all of this, you know, tension is almost over or we're, we're almost there. Um, 
and as as he leaves the room we see that lily's got like a graph in front of her and yeah. i at, at the time i was like i don't know what the fuck this graph is but it just as we've been talking it hit me she picked this up out of the burn barrel or whatever yeah. like this is it's this it's is, evidence yeah so she like wads it up and throws it in the trash and then thinks better of it and gets it out and like shoves it way down in the trash so that yeah. he doesn't see see it sitting there right and she's crying like she's uh, it like for what we see is just like a uh, you know like a little zigzag line graph presumably there's information on there indicating all of the animals he's been working on and it's right. you know it's enough that you know it's, it's enough to upset her it's it's either that or that's the second beating heart in her body right mm. although i think it would be a little early for that uh yeah yeah it's it, regardless it's definitely Whatever she sees here is right. indicating that, that it's Jeffrey distressing. is... Mm-hmm, yeah. So then we see her later going down to the Boyd farm to see if Looking she can just Alex. run into... Yeah, because she knows he's hanging around there all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, she asks about him, and they're like, oh, he's he's not been here today. He might be by later, though. I don't know. She's yeah, like, well, we get I'll... this suspicious sign of uh, looking for a lost uh, black and white dog named Chester. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she, she definitely clocks that and is like, hmm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, she buys some vegetables from the stand. She talks to Francis, the daughter. It's like thundering throughout the scene, and it starts to kind of rain. She like has like a grocery sack full of vegetables that she goes to put in her car. And then in the back seat of the car, she sees a bell attached to a ribbon. Right and now, if you remember, Fran likes to put bells on her, all of her animals. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, we saw that with the cow earlier, but why is there one in the back seat of the car? Yeah, uh, know. She knows. Yeah. And right, so as, as she's like starts to stand up, Alex appears and he's like, hey, let's talk about dinner. I feel like things were kind of tense. I'm sorry yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. And she, you know, she's kind of like bent over into the car as he's saying this. And she turns, it's like stands up, turns to him and she's like, oh my God, it's Jeffrey. Yeah. So then we cut back to the lab. Jeffrey's working. He's covered in blood. Then we go back to, to Lily and, uh, and Alex, and she's like, I got to go home. I got to talk to him. Right. And Alex's like, take my, let's take my truck because I'm trying to white knight over here. And, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, no, I really need to talk to Jeffrey alone. And he's like, well, let me come with you. I'll be moral support. I can, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, like, he's just trying to weasel his way as far into the situation as he can. So he looks bad the best. This guy is so gross. Yeah, and th- so they're driving to the farm, and he's like, why are you protecting him? And she's like, I'm not protecting him. He's my fucking husband. Like, right. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You know, I'm still going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt here. But then when they get to the house, things are definitely looking bad. There's a bunch of weird wires running out of Jeffrey's lab, across the yard, into the field. Right, and um, Jeff's messing with something. Something. It looks like Chester, but it's got its back's raised up a little bit higher than the front. <laughs> And he's got like a camera and he's taking a bunch of pictures um, or filming. It's, it's a video camera. He's filming. And as we get closer, we see that this is the front half of Chester and the back half of the of baby the calf. calf. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, fun. And, yeah. And it, it's like, it's so creepy. Like it, this is well, like it looks messed up. It's got all these wires running out of it. There's a weird like electrical box just attached to the dog's forehead. Uh, like it just looks just nasty, yeah. um, and obviously it's sections stapled together. Mm-hmm. And it's like moving really twitchy. Like it has no idea how to move. You know, we we see these Frankenstein monsters all the time that are usually human and they're confused and unable to like understand how to control their body. But now we've got an animal that's even less likely right. to understand how to control this weird body. Yeah, so it's it's very pitiful. Like, um, you know, it, this this is really well done. Like, it, you, it, it definitely grabs you and you feel bad for this, this thing. Right, and of course, Jeff is immediately like, I was just trying to help the dog. It, it was caught and it was dying. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm the good guy here. Yeah. And Lillian, they go to the barn to like argue and Alex Leaving is Alex behind. He's, he gets fucking self-righteous. And angry over this thing. And does he kill the, the thing? I feel like he does. It doesn't show it, but it dies in his arms. Mm-hmm. It's, it seems to, like, yeah, I think the implication is that he kills it rather than let this horrible thing live, which, you know, 
maybe is the, the humane thing to do in this situation. It's unclear, but um, mm-hmm. I think it also is like he doesn't want Jeffrey to get whatever benefit he might get out right. of having created this. That's what it seems like. He's more trying to rob Jeffrey than... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we got Jeffrey and Lillian fighting inside, um, and he's like, I swear, I, I just found the dog. Like, I, that's important <laughs> that you know. I did not hurt the dog on purpose. I'm trying to help here, which is obviously all a lie. Yeah. Um, they go back outside and see that the, the creation has died, and Jeffrey's like, this is all Alex's fault. Yeah, um, Alex, you fucking killed it. Yeah, and he's like, L- you know, Lily, like you, I feel like you, you've just had Mr. Ecology here waiting in the wings. Like, you, you don't care about me anymore, which is sort of true. Yeah. Um, so he kind of, like, sits down with his creation. Like, he lays down. He takes it back to the barn. Thing. Yeah, he, like... Uh, Alex and Lily are walking away, and you see Jeffrey kind fucking... of... Okay, sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry. you see Jeffrey, like, dragging it. And this part, like... Jeffrey, you know, we've, we've been saying over and over again, there's not really much redeemable about Jeffrey. No. But in this moment, like, you do see a little bit of sadness in him. Like, and, I mean, like, it's... I think it's definitely that his work has, has been ruined. Yes. But you do also... Like, the, it feels like there might be, like, a hint of, like... I'm sorry that this animal that I've made has has suffered. Uh, it may be just the tiniest hint of remorse, but like the, I, I feel like the uh, the actor here like does a, a pretty good job of like portraying a, a complicated moment. Right, and then of course Alex tips his fucking hand here at the very end, and he's like, "All right, let's go back to my place." <laughs> right, <laughs> with yeah. fucking no grace or or dignity whatsoever. He's like, mm-hmm. "I've ruined your husband's work. Let's fuck over it." Yeah, and Lily's like, no, I can't do that. I've got to take care of what's happening here. He's like, why? Yeah, I don't understand. And and she's like, this is this is my responsibility. So they end up getting in. He gets in his truck. She gets in the car. Then we see Jeffrey on the phone again, talking to his bosses. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm making lots of progress. Sure, can't wait to get those monkeys. I'm gonna really do something great then. Right. Um, I'll change the <laughs> face of the world. And then he turns around, and there's Farmer Boyd, who just punches him in the face and it is ko yeah the one of the most satisfying moments of the whole movie yeah, honestly it is <laughs> and, and then we just see boyd like walking out of the the barn when the delivery and, truck arrives mm-hmm. they're like hey where's jeffrey uh what was his name jeffrey Gaines. uh Gaines. yeah we can't and find boyd's him just, yeah, there's nobody here, and he just, like, walks off, and they're like, but we have a delivery, and you hear all these, like, monkeys screeching in the back and everything, and Boyd just, mm-hmm. like, walks away, um, and then we, the, the last shot of the movie is just Lillian driving away as the credits roll. Very angry. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, the question is, did Boyd kill him with that one punch, <laughs> or did he kill him afterwards, or did he just punch him that hard, and wa- just said, yeah. fuck it, walked away? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I, it definitely feels like I think Boyd figured out what was up and was not happy about it. I, I feel like it would make sense for him to have killed Jeffrey, um, yeah. especially but counterpoint. Because, counterpoint, like yes, he killed his dog. Understand? Mm-hmm. Do you think you really would have bothered? Like, why would he? Why would Boyd know unless Alex tipped him off, being the biggest motherfucker he could possibly be? Yeah, I don't know why Boyd would have come. Like, he, you know, at this point, like, if he's gone down in the lab, he's likely seen this amalgamation of dog and cow. But to have gone there in the first place, yeah, I don't know what would have inspired that. But I I definitely feel, you know, like, for good or ill, like, people who live on farms and deal with, like, animal death as, like, part of, you know, the cycle of, like, food and everything don't tend to, like, get close to pets either. So I don't think that he would necessarily have that much of a uh, be that upset about the dog to like want to kill him well but and could... he got 300 dollars for the cat so why does he care you know like, yeah. like you're saying he doesn't even know he wouldn't ever name the cow because he's mm-hmm. going to eat the calf someone else yeah. used the calf why does he care yeah it, it feels like maybe jeffrey is sort of like the metaphorical stand-in for like the, all the things that the scientific community have done to fuck over his family. Right. Uh, there's There's been a few mentions that possibly Boyd is dying and that it might be related to the chemi- chemicals on the farm. Mm-hmm. So maybe, but like, I think you might be right. I think Alex might have been like, hey, you should come to this, t- to the, the Gaines farm and you'll see something that, th- right. that, that would make sense to me. And, and then I could see that, that Boyd might want to like 
you know, take out his rage on like what has happened to him and his family because of modern science uh, right. and take that out on Jeffrey. The only like, all right, so obviously we're past the end. The only regret I have of this movie is that someone didn't shoot Alex too. Mm-hmm. Like literally Alex and Jeff didn't, neither one deserved to make it through the end of the movie. Yeah. It, like, it would have been poetic. Cool, but, yeah. I, I feel like in most cases, this movie would have ended with Alex and Jeffrey killing each other. Yes. Um, I feel like letting Boyd do it is kind of like, if Alex kills Jeffrey, then it's like whatever, like, you know, they, they both suck. But like yeah. Boyd doing it uh, or, or knocking him out at least is like, here's an, the actual good blameless person in the movie being like, fuck you and the, and the things that you're doing. Right. Um, so I think that that's the, the movie making a, a, you know, a moral point here that, you know, that it's not the, the shitty Alex who's, you know, fighting the off worst, Jeffrey. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So But it kind I, of is to a degree because uh, like Alex is only kind of paying lip service to everything, right? Mhm. Yeah. He, he's only doing so much. And he got, yeah. has ulterior motives behind that. It's very much like PETA and their whole we're protecting the animals while also killing all the animals. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's my personal yeah. opinion. <laughs> if you disagree yeah. that's fine. Yeah, it definitely if if it, it seems like it would have made more sense if, like, Jeffrey had... Like, if Alex had killed the calf mm-hmm. thing, and Jeffrey had killed Alex, and then Boyd, and then Boyd killed, killed Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Th- Perfect. Yeah. I think that would have made a little bit more sense. But, yeah, so, like, I mean, this movie is definitely, you know, it, it's it's a message movie. It definitely is talking about... It's against animal cruelty. It's against, like, Monsanto and, and you know, chemical yeah. farming and stuff like that. That's definitely the, the, the Frankenstein thing here is that, like science unchecked can cause harm to you know innocent bystanders um capitalist science the most (laughs) yeah and like as we as i was watching this like i was talking to someone and i was like man i'm like uh, i've got like 10 minutes left in this movie and there's not really been (laughs) a frankenstein yet i mean there's been there's there's like you know a, a scientist who's up to no good but i was like i haven't I haven't seen like you know a, an amalgamated creature, and then you, you finally do get it at the end, which I, I thought that was a good payoff. Like it, it really worked to like build to that. Would you um, call that a cog or a death? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think death works better. Death, okay, okay, <laughs> we'll take it. And and because of the way it was done, like uh, you know, it was maybe a little heavy-handed on the yeah. message, but but not not like obtrusively so but then like i said like I, I i watched through the credits because at first like the credits had like kind of flowers and stuff like you know interweaving through all the the credits so i was like you know something might happen here at the end and when you get to the like the requisite no animals were harmed thing this one specifically said no animals were harmed in the making of this movie beyond the question of whether animals can humanely be asked to perform in films at all every reasonable effort was made during the filming of no telling to uphold the principles of animal rights so uh you know I, I, as far as the calf goes i don't know how but like it seemed it seems like they're, they're not just giving the boilerplate we have to say no animals were harmed they were like but, we actually thought about this but counterpoint the last the the drawn image at the very end of the movie is is the Im- outline of jeff pulling the calf mm-hmm. yeah so yeah i thought that was yeah, yeah. an interesting i'm still uh, side-eyeing this movie <laughs> i don't care what they say you know, I don't know enough about the way that you, that farmers or rodeo people yeah. treat cows to know, but like, yeah, I mean, it. Oh, it's, it's one of those things. <laughs> it's yeah, bad. It, it it looks rough, and yeah. maybe it is. I you know, I don't know. Um, it's kind of similar to like we saw that Frankenstein on campus where he had the dog and cat fight. Yeah. And like, it looked pretty intense, and it was like it was really hard to say if it was just really well edited or if there was some actual uh, aggression between a dog and a cat. Where um, the cat won. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll hope that it, this was all movie magic and, uh, you know, th- that it was accurate. But yeah. yeah, if you were sensitive to animals looking in distress, this movie. This ain't your movie. Yeah. I feel like it specifically has that as, you know, it's part of this whole message. They want you to feel uncomfortable about this. They want you to see what Jeffrey's doing and be like, this is awful. You know, we're going to show you these Polaroids of cut open mice and stuff so that you feel the pain of, of what these animals are going through. And maybe second guess, you know, when you buy a thing that was tested on animals, like, 
uh, you know, it, it definitely feels like this is the intent of Larry Fessenden here to like make you aware of what happens when animals are tested on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, it is it is a movie with a message, but man, is it a miserable! Like, I I appreciate the message, but the movie itself is like it's wallowing in misery almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. and I haven't seen everything that he has done, but like especially his early stuff seems like it kind of wallows in sort of like the dark points of life. Like I think his more well-known movie from around this time, I want to say it's called Thirst or Addiction or something like that. It, it's it's a vampire movie, but it's also about heroin addiction. Right. Um, and you know it's it's a pretty heavy metaphor there as well. And, you know, a guy that falls in love with a vampire girl, but it's all about being addicted to drugs and everything. And it's also just it's a really well made movie that I don't really ever want to watch again because it's just yeah. unpleasant, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of feel the same way about this one. Like it's just it's about unhappy people treating each other badly. You know, and I think that's we often see with Frankenstein movies that Victor ignores Elizabeth and everything. Right. But we usually we're not so honed in on the relationship that we don't see Elizabeth suffering and being alone and everything. And that feels kind of intentional as well. Like, we've seen the story over and over again, but we've never really zoomed in and seen like, oh, yeah, these are, you know, these are people who are, are hurting each other and suffering because of their, their actions. Um, so... I, I did appreciate, I mean, you know, again, I appreciated it for what it was, and, you know, it, it wasn't a fun watch, but, right. uh, you know, it definitely had some interesting things to say. Uh, it came at, at the Frankenstein story from a unique angle that, that I appreciated. Fair enough. I'd have to agree. All right, Anthony, so we've watched a uh, movie with uh, no telling, uh, but how about we uh, check out something a little bit more depraved (laughs) yeah so we're gonna finish our sort of larry fessenden double feature with his other much more recent frankenstein movie that's a little more literally a frankenstein movie um Mm -hmm. yeah depraved that this one i have seen it's been a little bit but i i it's still kind of a bummer but i tend to remember it being a little bit more pleasant than the no telling was so how I'm wild is it that jacob's wife might be one of his most po- positive movies <laughs> right and he, he he didn't write it but he started it so. yeah that's one thing that i think is really cool about him is like he writes and directs a lot of stuff but also like any like low budget movie he will just like jump in and, and act in them just to like put his name behind movies to help other people out and he's pretty um, good I mean, I like, yeah, he's a great I like actor. He's, yeah, yeah um, he's one of those like you know if you watch a lot of like indie horror, he's a, a that, that guy, guy kind of. Yeah, like you're not gonna see him like in mainstream stuff, but like yeah, he pops yeah, up in a lot of things. You'll know when you see him though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, a very distinctive looking dude. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we'll see his his other uh, Frankenstein movie next week. All right, where can they find us, Anthony? Uh, yeah, so we're on all the socials at the Frankencast. Uh, you can email us at the Frankencast at gmail.com. You can find us over on YouTube. Uh, and you can also find us uh, at patreon.com slash the Frankencast, where we're you know still doing our free trials. We've got had several people join, and you know we've been chatting with people over there and having a good time. So uh, we, we would definitely uh, love to have you there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, if there's nothing more to be said... To be continued. Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening.